And give yourself a round of applause for, for involving yourself, for crying out, for coming to the altar, for lifting your hands. You know what that did for God? You know how he smiled when he looked down and he saw that? Even though the week that you had and the troubles that you had, you forgot all about that for about 20 minutes. And you just came here and you thanked your God and your worship and your praise and you lifted your hands. But Mickey's hands was hurting. He has shoulder surgery soon and he's here like this. What does that do for God's heart when he sees his children coming to him even though they had a hard week? You don't think that will speed up the blessing in your life? You don't think God's going to say, let me reward my child? When your child comes home with straight A's, you want to do something nice for them. And you guys all got an A today in church. You all got an A, and God's going to reward you for that this week. Okay, let's, uh, can you throw up my text, please? It's uh, 2 Kings chapter 5. Verses 1 through 14. Now, this issue that he had is a serious issue back then. It was a common issue. There was different type of lepros leprosy in those days. Now, Naban was just not an ordinary man. He was a powerful man. He was a rich man. He won battles. He had a strong position. But he also had leprosy. Even though he had all those things and he had accomplished all those things, he still had a situation that his his, uh, his money couldn't help him, who he knew couldn't help him, his boss couldn't help him, his high position couldn't help him. The only thing that could help him was the Lord, as we've seen. And some of you are in that position today. And we saw the scripture, and it went this way, that he had to do something in order to get that cleansiness, to get clean. And my topic this morning is, if you don't obey, you will remain the same way. If you do not obey, you will remain the same way. Some of us this morning are like Naaman. We have an issue. We have a problem in our lives that only God can address. We have a situation that's bubbling inside of us and that's happening in our homes that only God can fix. You have situations on the job. You have situations in every area of your life that you can't handle it. You can't fix it. You don't know who to talk to. Or who to go to. Your money can't buy the proper psychiatrist. Your money can't buy the proper doctor to help you. Your money can't buy the friend to listen to you. But only God can help you with this situation. And that is where he found himself this morning. The Bible said he was a man of wealth. Undefeated. He was famous. But he needed a miracle only God can help him with. The first thing we're going to look at there is who gave the suggestion. Who gave him an idea where to go to? The little slave girl. She was captured from her family and brought to Naaman's uh, wife to be a helper. She was nobody important, but she gave an important message. They didn't, they didn't care who this little girl, she had no title. She had no position. She was there, captured just to do slave work, but she heard. She heard about a man from where she used to live, that they were healing. And she delivered the message. Some of you today, you feel that you're not important enough, that no one's going to listen to you. You don't have a title. I don't have an education, a college degree. Why would they listen to me? But let me tell you something. If you can tell somebody about God, if you can point somebody towards Jesus, that is the biggest accomplishment you will ever have in your life is winning somebody for God. That is what this little girl did. She gave an answer when he did not have an answer. Some people today, they don't have the answer, but you as a child of God, you have an answer that you can give to them. There are too many friendships these days that when you go to their friends, they don't know God, and they'll answer you like this. Well, let's go to the bar and have a drink and talk about it. Well, let's go catch a movie, and after the movie, we'll get dinner, and then we'll have some drinks, and we'll talk about it. I'll listen to you. When they have no help to give you, you go to a family member who's not safe for advice, and they're like, just leave him. It ain't going to work out. I told you not to marry him in the first place. <laughs> Those are the type of advice people give you when they're not saved. But when you hear 
of God and you have a relationship with the Father and you know someone in need, be an encourager. Give them the good news. Let them know that, hey, I know a man who can get you out of your situation. I know a man who've healed before. I know a man that died on the cross for your sins. I know somebody. Don't stay quiet when they come to you. Don't stay quiet when you're hearing a conversation and someone needs an encouragement. Someone needs to hear about God. She said, go. Elijah, the man of God, heard. When words fall on good ears, you get a good result. Elijah was a holy man. Okay? You cannot get a word from each and everybody. You cannot take an advice from anybody who has a word to give to you. You have to know that that word is coming from God because that person's life is clean. He had a word for him. Elijah had told him what to do. God told Elijah, Elijah had given him an instructions on what to do. You remember what the scripture said? Elijah said, you go and do this, this, and this. Okay? He had the issue. He had someone tell him where to go. Now he is getting the answer, step by step by step. There's a process in everything we do in our lives. You don't just jump from point A to Z. You got to go through it. Okay? So now we're at where he told him, go and dip yourself, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, not six times, but dip yourself seven times. When God gives instructions, when God gives direction, it is crystal clear to you. When the Bible tells you what to do, when you have a situation and you open up your Bible and you look for an answer and God has given it to you, there's nothing confusing about what it says. It is simple. God does not want to complicate your situation when it's already complicated for you. He wants to make it as easy as possible and as crystal clear as possible. Now say, you have an issue, I have an answer. You need to do something, I'm going to show you how to do it. And when you do it like the way I say it, you will get what you asked for. Naaman went... And the man told him, go dip yourself seven times. He got the answer. He obeyed. He went. He got, after a little while, he didn't want to go. But he finally said, why don't you just go give this a try? Go. And he went. And they told him, go do something silly. Because some of us feel sometimes when we go to God and he gives you, tells you what to do, that makes no sense to you. Why are you sending me in a muddy Jordan River? When there's crystal clear waters and clear waters, why can I have gone and dipped in that? Why are you confusing me even more? The man gave him the direction, and the Bible said he got annoyed. Holy water. <laughs> the bottle's too small. <laughs> He had a problem with the answer. Too many people today get the answer and we don't like the answer and we still have a problem. He didn't like what the man said. So he came with a physical issue and now he's leaving with an inside issue. He's leaving with an attitude. Some of us, we come and you hear the word of God and it's speaking directly to you and you don't like what it says and you leave even more upset then you came in because the answer was not fast enough for you. The answer wasn't the way you wanted it. The answer wasn't in your time frame. The answer wasn't how you wanted it to be presented to you. You don't like what God has to say sometimes. A lot of people, they go to God and they want it like that. They want that Lazarus milk. Just come forth and everything will be okay. They want to go somewhere and some preacher goes and shaba, shaba, shaba and a little oil and then they are healed and that's what they want. 
He didn't like what God had said. Or what the man has told him to do. And sometimes when God wants to do something different in our lives and he wants to heal us, you ain't going to like what you're going to have to do. You're not going to like it. You know why? Because you don't understand and it doesn't make sense to you. But God is not here to make sense to you. He's here to show you if you trust me, it won't make sense to you in the going through, but when you come out of it, you will say, look, ah, now I know why I had to dip seven times. Now I know why it didn't work out the first time I dipped. Now I know. Now I get it. But it's only until you go through it, then you will understand it. And sometimes right now you're in that unhappy place. You've asked God for something. And now he's going on his own thinking. He's saying, I thought... I thought he would have put his hand on me and healed me right then and there. I thought. That is the problem today with a lot of believers. We think. I thought this should have happened. I thought that my house should be paid by now. I thought that my healing would have happened by now. I thought I would have been married by now. I thought... And we're using our own human mind when we didn't know why God has taken us through a process. He thought that he would have been healed right then and there. It happens like that sometimes. Yes, don't tell me God can't heal you right there, but that doesn't happen like that for everyone. Your situation in your life is different from the person next to you. God don't answer every prayer the same way. Otherwise, you wouldn't learn anything. He said, go dip in that dirty Jordan River. Sometimes the situation God is sending you in, or he's telling you to do, you think is worse than the situation you're in right now. I'm already covered in sores and, and boils and my nose is falling off. You're telling me to go dip in that muddy river. This does not make sense to me. And a lot of times we want the healing, but it doesn't make sense, and we're not willing to do what God said. You want that healing from that family member, but you don't want to talk to them. You want that friendship to be restored, but you don't want to make the first step and say, I'm sorry. Why? Because you didn't do anything wrong. I don't need to go to them first. They need to come to me. That's the inner problem. Sometimes, not every time, I'm almost finished. Sometimes, God, you are unclear of how God is going to help you. And the answer he gives you is still unclear to you. You don't understand it. But it's not for us to understand. It's for us to trust. If it was easy, if, it was, if, you, if you understand everything God had planned out in your life, you know what you wouldn't have? You wouldn't have no faith. You wouldn't know how to encourage someone. You wouldn't know how to tell someone to hold on a little longer, brother. You wouldn't know what a sacrifice is. You wouldn't know what a miracle is because you never had to wait. You got it right then and there. If you never cried before, you won't know what it is to smile. It didn't make sense to him. But one day it would. And a lot of us are right now are in that situation. We're in a cloudy situation. We're in a dirty situation. We're in a painful situation. We're in a financial situation. That I don't know why this it does not make sense to me. You're telling me to go to church. All right, well, you went one Sunday. Well, Lord, I'm still the same. You're telling me to give. You put a little five in there. But Lord, they took away hours from my job. God does not want you to do something one time and he will just give it to you. Sometimes he is testing you. He wants to see your obedience and he wants to see your faith. And if you can pass those two tests, you will get that miracle that you so deeply have been asking for. You so deeply have been suffering for years and you want to know when, 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 when. Yes, I got the answer now. Yes, I heard it. I'm going to go do. Okay, yes, I'm fed up with trying on my own. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go dip. Now, God didn't tell him if he was going to give him the miracle on the first dip or the seventh dip. He just said, go dip seven times. 
And some of you are in between there. But whatever you ask God for, and he told you to do it, and you're ready to give up. Maybe you have dipped twice, and you see nothing. That water is still muddy, and you're still in your mess. And you are ready to give up. And you said, no, 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 no. I heard what pastor said two weeks ago. You know what? I'm going to go, go one more time. And you went with all your strength and your happiness, and you're expecting it to happen, and it didn't happen the third time. And you get fed up, and people are saying, ha, I told you it ain't going to work. That's how you're going to be the rest of your life. God is taking you daily. That's all you're going to get. You're just going to get daily bread. You deserve nothing more. And that boiled you. I'm going to go one more time. And then you go for the fourth time before God, and you bow your heads, and you're praying. And you're reminding God how good he is. And, Lord, you blessed that brother for this. And, Lord, you gave that person that. And, Lord, this, Lord, that. And it's your fourth time, and still you're covered in sores spiritually, and still you're in a mess, and still you're hurting, and still you're in pain, and you're still broke. You could have given up then, but you say, no, no, I'm going to go the fifth time. And you go the fifth time. And you're getting tired of this routine of me trying and me obeying and nothing is happening. That's where some of you are at right now. You have followed his instructions. I have listened to your word, Lord. My life is right, God. I've been praying, Lord. I've been holding on to that promise, Lord. I haven't given up yet. It was frustrating a year ago. But I'm still here, Lord, because I know you said it. And nothing happened. And then the sixth day comes. Let me tell you, let me, let me encourage you with this. If your miracle didn't happen for you today, you know what that means? You are one day closer for it to happening. So be thankful in both. If it didn't happen today, say, uh -huh, I crossed today. The third is off. It might happen on the fourth. And if it doesn't happen on the fourth, cross that one out again. Hey, I still have another day. That's how you keep encouraging yourself. Because it's going to happen. You can't experience the seventh day miracle until you start on the first. You can't jump from there to there. Sixth day is over with. You're exhausted. You're drained. You had enough. You have no more advice to give. You have no more left in you. Let me just do this one more time. Imagine if Naaman had given up on the sixth day. All that. Imagine if you had given up four years ago. Imagine if you had given up on that child. Imagine if you had given up on that brother. Imagine if you had given up on your church. Why? Because you got frustrated. You didn't see. But deep down inside, you know, you didn't fulfill your part. But you're frustrated. What you're frustrated for? The man said dip seven times. The seventh day came. Can you imagine him going down like, oh, I'm going to come back up the same. He went down with the same, oh, oh just another day. You can go, you, you're going to go down praying. You're going to go down giving. Oh, my last 20, I have to give it away. Yeah. I have to go say sorry if I stole someone's seat and I didn't know that was their seat. And, you know, they come to church once a year and they claim that seat and I didn't know I'm new. And you got to go one more time down. And you go down with the same problem. But the way he came back up is a different story. And today, some of y'all, it's your sixth day of going down. It's your sixth evening. It's your sixth year. It's the sixth time. And number seven is coming from heaven. Number seven today, say, tell, tell myself, hey, today is my day. I obeyed what the Lord said. I didn't always like it. I didn't always like my life. But today, today, today is a new day. Give him praise. Give him praise. You are no longer a leper. You are no longer in sin. You are no longer poor. You are no longer lonely. You are no longer, I'm a new man. God is healed.